like to thank you all for joining us for the official groundbreaking ceremony for Raleigh Union Station. This project is so important to the city of Raleigh because it will be the cornerstone of the city's public transportation and transit infrastructure. Public transportation and transit systems have the power... Right on cue! <laughs> nice. Did you? Thank you. Thanks. Uh, have the power to transform our region. A strong system will drive development and growth, not only for our city, but also throughout the county and the state. Today's groundbreaking is the culmination of years of work to develop, design, and fund a new Raleigh Union Station. We would not be here today without the help of our federal, state, and local government partners. We've invited a few of our partners to join us this morning, including North Carolina Governor Pat McCrory, U.S. Congressman David Price, North Carolina Secretary of Transportation Tony Tata, U.S. Department of Transportation Assist Assistant Secretary for Tan Transportation Carlos Monge, and Senior Manager of State Quarters for Amtrak Jay MacArthur. <laughs> Awesome. I do want to take just a minute to uh, recognize a few other elected officials that are here from the city. We have Councilors Mary Ann Baldwin, Eugene Weeks, Bonner Gaylord, Wayne Mayorano, Russ Stevenson, and Kay Crowder. Did I miss anybody? Okay. And from the County Commission, we have Chair James West. Sig Hutchinson, John Burns, and Matt Calabria. I also have to give a shout out to our past mayor, Charles Meeker, who's also here. Thanks. Thank you all for coming today. This project would not have been possible without your hard work, efforts, and support. At this time, I'd like to invite Governor Pat McCrory to say a few words. Governor McCrory has long been an advocate for transportation, and recently he unveiled his 25-year vision for transportation in North Carolina. Please join me in welcoming Governor McCrory. What a great week for the capital of North Carolina. And uh, we had a great announcement Tuesday in which we are connecting a beautiful park with the rest of the state and the beautiful Raleigh region. <laughs> Mayor, congratulations. Congratulations to the people of Raleigh, the city council. And now on Friday of the same week, we're connecting the rest of the state through transportation with not only North Carolina, but the rest of the nation. I have very fond memories of a young boy when I was six, seven, and eight years old before my family moved from Columbus, Ohio to Greensboro, North Carolina. We used to, in Columbus, my parents would take me to the old Union Station in Columbus, Ohio to pick up my grandmother, who every time she'd come to visit from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, she took the train from Milwaukee to Columbus. And I'll never remember as a small boy walking into this grand railroad station and being overwhelmed and amazed about this beautiful structural building and watching my grandmother get off with her suitcases and giving her a big hug in the train station and going, wow, this is what it's all about. A train station being the center of activity at that time in Ohio. Sadly, later on in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, transportation moved to primarily cars and to airplanes, we kind of let go of railroads being an alternative transportation mode. And sadly, we tore down many of the beautiful train stations that existed throughout the United States. And therefore, the centerpiece of these train, train stations when they were torn down also impacted the viability of the areas of the center cities where those train stations used to exist. In addition, in their replacement, we built train stations as kind of a temporary stopover. Very poor architecture, very poor customer service amenities, and very poor parking and no activity around those train stations. Ladies and gentlemen, sometimes you have to go back in time to move to the future, and that's exactly what we're doing in Raleigh today. 
We're moving forward to build a beautiful train station, again, that will be the centerpiece of transportation, not only for Raleigh, but also for North Carolina. And I'm telling you right now, Mayor, I, the vision of a train coming here with a beautiful train station, beautiful amenities, is going to be a wonderful connection to other cities in North Carolina and other cities along the whole corridor. And now our consumer will have viable choices between railroad, between automobile, and also between the airplane. And I firmly believe in the more choices you have for transportation, the better it is for our quality of life, the better it is for our environment, and the better it is for our economy. I also anticipate this area now with this new Raleigh Union Station to have vibrant new activity. I guarantee you right now the real estate prices are going to start going up. You'll get more property tax money, the city council, and you're going to start having much more vibrant pedestrian friendly activity in and around the train station, just like I remember back in the 1960s. This is going to help the consumer. It's going to provide transportation choices. It's going to help economic development. And uh, it's a win-win for everyone. Now, this didn't happen by accident. This happened through leadership between local, state, and federal government. Bipartisan leadership between local, state, and federal government where we're actually working together. Isn't that good news? That's the way it should be. And I want to congratulate your mayor. I want to congratulate your previous mayor, who I knew had visions of this and had talked about it many, many times. And I also want to thank David Price, who's a big advocate of all forms of transportation. When I was mayor down the road of another city, he worked with me on transportation matters for this state. This has been a long time vision, and it's, it's happening now. I also want to thank a person who, um, in, in my first weeks in office, who came to my office and said, Governor, we're going to make this happen, and that's Secretary Tony Tata. Uh, I think he's the best secretary in the United States of America regarding state DOT officials. But he literally told me in his first weeks in office about this vision of a Raleigh Union station, and he immediately started working with your mayor. He started immediately started working with the federal representatives, including the, uh, uh, the president's administration the mayor's administration, and your wonderful congressman. And uh, Tony Tata, I just want to thank you for your hard-charging leadership. You all need to give him a round of applause. He is an outstanding leader, and I'm glad to have him on my team. Now, there's one thing I'm going to mention, too. Now with the park connecting with the rest of North Carolina, now with the Raleigh Union Station connecting with the North, rest of North Carolina and the rest of the nation, we can't stop now. I'm going to take this opportunity for 20 seconds. I'm promoting bonds for future transportation for our highways, for rail, for our ports, for intermodal, for our parks throughout North Carolina, and for our universities and community colleges. I was born when Dwight David Eisenhower was president, and he firmly believed in investing in infrastructure, including transportation. And I believe the more choices you have in, in, in transportation, in parks, and in education, the better we're going to be for future generations. So please help us. This is just the beginning of connecting North Carolina. And what better place to begin this effort than our state capital, Raleigh, North Carolina. God bless you, and thank you for everyone's leadership in this effort. Thank you, Governor. As I noted earlier, transportation systems have the power to transform regions, which is why transportation remains one of the most important and challenging issues facing all levels of government today. Transportation and transit is costly, and there are more projects that need to be done than we currently have the revenue sources to complete. However, investments in transportation have the ability to net a high return. As Raleigh and North Carolina both grow in population and industry, we must have strong transportation systems to support that growth and connect regions that will in turn continue to attract business development, new residents, and tourism. 
We're already seeing the impacts of Raleigh Union Station investment in the surrounding areas. The city's warehouse district is transforming before us and we're seeing new businesses spurring innovation moving into the area along with new restaurants and entertainment opportunities. Yeah. <laughs> The Union Station project stands to change the economic development potential of the warehouse district. The station will replace what is currently an underutilized collection of warehouses and vacant land with a new city landmark that will not only serve as a multimodal transportation hub, but also a civic space with potential for special events and expanded dining and entertainment options downtown. I'd like to uh, take this moment now to introduce Congressman David Price. Congressman Price has been instrumental in helping us secure federal funding in support of the Union Station project, and his constituents know that he is a strong supporter of transportation initiatives. Welcome, Congressman Price. Thank you, and good morning. It's a real pleasure to join all of you. What a great show of uh, enthusiasm and support for this uh, project. It's great to be with you. It's great to welcome um, Carlos Mania from the Federal Railroad Administration, uh, Jay MacArthur from Amtrak, and to be here on the stage with Governor McCrory, Secretary Tata, uh, Mayor McFarland, friends from uh, Triangle Transit, NCDOT, uh, the uh, local county and city governments, all, all assembled here with these friends and supporters, and uh, many, many people in this group have had something to do, something important to do with bringing us to this day. So congratulations to all. I'm proud to represent Raleigh and represent the Triangle area. Uh, we've received national recognition as a place, uh, one of the very best places to live, work, raise a family, start a business, retire. And we're determined to live up to that, to grow not just rapidly but smartly. The plans we've put in place to promote sustainable growth require strong leadership, leadership that's tenacious, that uh, persists. And that's the kind of leadership that's been demonstrated, I believe, at, um, by, by the city of Raleigh, from the mayor, the city council, the management team, the community at large. So I, I would say Union Station is, is a, about as good an example as you could get of the partnerships that we celebrate with leadership coming from the city, Triangle Transit, and both the state and federal DOT. Now Raleigh's transit and train ridership are on the rise. Uh, current Raleigh facilities, uh, as, as the governor remarked, aren't anything to write home about. Uh, we need to anticipate uh, the future. We need to anticipate uh, fu future growth. And as he said, maybe the best way to do that in this case is to, is to look back at the kind of train station facilities that this country once had. This multimodal, it, it's, it's different in this way. It's multimodal. It's going to be geared to all kinds of transportation alternatives that we might be able to develop in the future. It's going to encourage intermodal transportation including local, regional, and intercity bus service, as well as Amtrak's passenger rail service, faster and faster speeds, future commuter and light rail, we hope. Uh, today we share the excitement of the opportunities this transportation will, center will bring to Raleigh. Now, just a word about the federal support. I'm very proud of that support and very glad to have the federal government present and accounted for. Uh, there have been two very competitive Tiger grants awarded to the city of Raleigh. It's a federal investment that recognizes that Raleigh, Raleigh's Union Station uh, signifies the wave of the future. An America that includes revitalized cities, increased mobility for people wherever they live and work, reduced traffic congestion, cleaner air, smart public policy that brings all levels of government together in support of diverse modes of transportation. So this project, like other Tiger projects, uh, nationwide will pay dividends for our economy now and in the future. This project also was able to draw on some of the Recovery Act funds awarded to the state for the advancement of rail. And, and we all know that those funds were awarded not just because of future promise, because of the commitment, the, the progress this state had already made in developing rail, especially rail as a viable transportation alternative between Raleigh and Charlotte. Now. That was pretty slow going for a long time. Sometimes it seemed like we were building it, as we said, one grade crossing at a time. But serious work is now underway. That is uh, already the transportation mode of choice between Raleigh and Charlotte. And, um, <clears throat> and, and 
I must say, it's got to be Richmond next. And then on to Washington. We still have a lot of work to do on, on our rail service. Um, I've begun service this year as the ranking member on the House Transportation Appropriations Subcommittee. I, uh, I hope to use that position to champion uh, Tiger, to champion inner city rail, and there are other funding streams that are e essential. Uh, we got to support uh, enhanced bus service. We got to support the New Starts program that helps communities develop transit systems, Amtrak, high speed rail. And we need a long term surface reauthorization bill in this country. Our country needs that in the worst way. So the stakes for Raleigh and for North Carolina are great. We've got to get moving. Having said that, while federal support is, is absolutely essential, as, as we know, uh, it's also critical, absolutely critical, that we work with state and local officials on these priorities, and this, this project exemplifies that. And that's why I'm encouraged that uh, mass transit and rail have been included, prominently included, in Governor McCrory's 25-year transportation plan. I know Secretary Tata was instrumental in developing that plan. Secretary Tata and his team have kept me and others in our congressional delegation informed about his department's progress toward realizing that vision. This is one area where Democrats and Republicans uh, can and must work together, just like different levels of government have to work together. Uh, work together with advocates, work together with stakeholders to help ensure that our transportation needs are met. So I'm happy today to introduce to you uh, Secretary Tony Tata, Look forward to our continued cooperation on the Raleigh Union Station and other projects. He's offering effective leadership, and it is significant and appropriate that he be here today to help launch this project. Secretary Tatum. Thank you, Congressman Price. I found it uh, fitting that you got the train and I got the ambulance. So. Uh, <laughs> It's great to see so many friends uh, in the audience out here today, uh, governor, mayor, congressman, uh, directors, uh, assistant secretaries. It's uh, a, a great day for Raleigh, and uh, it's taken strong partnership, as you've heard every speaker say, at every level, uh, local, state, federal, and to make this a reality. And, and from a North Carolina Department of Transportation perspective, we have been pleased to play a central role in this effort, contributing $9 million in state funds in addition to technical assistance and project management support. Our team has done an outstanding job, and I want to make sure I recognize those, such as uh, my Deputy Secretary for Transit, Jeff Mann, and Rail, Direc Rail Director Paul Worley. Let's give them both a big round of applause. And, and they're just the tip of an iceberg of a big team that has worked very hard on this. And as you know, in addition to contributing matching funds, uh, we work closely with the Federal Railroad Administration to redirect 15 million, and this is what the governor was talking about at the very beginning, about two and a half years ago, 15 million in American Recovery and Reinvestment Act funding to the city of Raleigh so that we could put that money toward this station and help the city of Raleigh reach its goal of having Raleigh Union Station. We've moved forward with all these efforts because from day one we've recognized the significance of a downtown Union Station to this city, our region, as the governor says, to the state and the connectivity. And to echo what Governor McCrory has said, rail investment continues to be vitally important to North Carolina's future and our ability to connect both people and freight to destinations across the state and throughout the state. And as he detailed in his 25-year vision, rail plays a significant role. Freight connecting to the ports as well as passenger and commuter rail in the future of North Carolina. And I'll digress for a minute as on a personal level as a member of the Downtown Raleigh Alliance Board, and I know David Diaz is out here somewhere, this is a big deal for downtown Raleigh. And another big deal for downtown Raleigh is the governor's Project Phoenix. The governor is proposing to lease back from developers, once they demolish some buildings, to revitalize 
downtown Raleigh, the government part of that. And I think that will go hand in hand with this re development effort and redeveloping the government sector uh, further north uh, up uh, Fayetteville Street and making that and Blunt Street and making that holistic downtown Raleigh connected in a much more appealing fashion. And so I just wanted to give a plug for Project Phoenix and the governor's vision there. Back to rail. To give you a statewide picture, the total economic impact of freight is about $1.75 billion. For commuter rail, passenger rail, it's about $121 million. And that is a big deal for economic impact for our state. And as you know, Raleigh Union Station is part of our Piedmont Improvement Program where we're investing over a half a billion dollars from Raleigh to Charlotte to increase safety and increase speed so that we can have better connectivity and safer routes from this hub to Charlotte. And just this week, we had Secretary Fox down here where two days ago we had the Southeast Corridor meeting where secretaries from Virginia, myself, Georgia, South Carolina were talking about how can we connect with higher speed rail all along the Southeast. So, this, this hub, this station, is pivotal in that grander vision of connecting the Southeast. So these projects, these projects will make train and highway travel safer, more reliable. It'll better connect, as the governor says. And as the demographics of our state and city shift, the land use, of the city of Raleigh and the land use throughout the state, we are considering that as we do our short and long range planning. And as we position ourselves for the future, Raleigh Union Station is gonna factor in a big way for this city, our capital city, for many, many years to come. And I just wanna thank everyone for all of their hard work that they put into making this a reality. And I'm humbled to be part of the team that has moved this forward. So thank you, Mayor, for your leadership, and thank you, Governor, for yours and Congressman. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you, Secretary Tata. A key, a key component of the funding strategy for Raleigh Union Station has been in securing Tiger Grant funding. And we've been fortunate to secure two Tiger Grants in support of this station. I'd like to invite U.S. Department of Transportation Assistant Secretary for Transportation, Carlos Monhead, to say a few words. Good morning. Um, the federal government, and in particular my boss, uh, Secretary uh, Anthony Fox, who, as you guys know, is a North Carolinian, uh, are proud to be partners in this project. The federal government has contributed $53 million for this project through a number of programs, including our TIGER program that you've heard about a couple times. Let me explain a little bit why TIGER is special to us. Uh, the vast majority of funding that goes out at the federal level is sent out by formula to states and to transit agencies. Uh, whereas TIGER is a competitive program. That means communities all across the country have to compete. They have to prove that their projects are the most innovative, the most collaborative, and the most impactful. It's actually easier to get into Harvard than it is to get a single TIGER grant. Uh, statistically, that's true. And uh, the folks who are here today should be very proud uh, that Raleigh not only won one, but won two years in a row. So that's a good news story for Raleigh. And it, it shouldn't be a surprise why. Uh, this station brought together great partners to really change the face of transportation in this community, in the region. Uh, connecting passenger rail to Raleigh's bus system, sparking economic development in this great neighborhood, and preparing for the high performance rail that will let Triangle residents travel quickly to Charlotte, Richmond, Washington, D.C., and beyond. The good news is that uh, this community has leaders and a congressman who understand that investments like this are necessary. I, you know, I lived in Raleigh 10 years ago, and it's amazing to me to see how quickly and how fast it's grown uh, since then. Today, Raleigh has 425,000 uh, people. Uh, this is the fastest growing in the uh, region in the country. Uh, in 30 years, there's going to be 727,000 people. So from 425,000 to 727,000 people. If you think that the traffic on I-40 is hard right now, 
Imagine uh, with 70% more drivers on the road. It's going to be mess, uh, a mess. Uh, that's why alternatives like transit and passenger rail really are essential. They take cars off the road and provide reliable and affordable ways to get from place to place. That's the good news. Uh, the bad news is that there are projects like Raleigh Union Station all across the country that we can't get to. We have to fight every year to secure money for the Tiger program. And Congress hasn't funded high-speed rail in a meaningful way for a long time. Projects like this take a long time to plan and build. And local leaders need robust and long-term funding for transportation. Instead, Congress has funded a series of short-term bills. And the next one runs out just at the end of this month. The White House and the U.S. Department of Transportation has proposed legislation that would fix this. It's called the Grow America Act. I'm not allowed to leave the building without mentioning the Grow America Act. And what, what it would do, would, it would double Tiger, which means we could reach a lot more projects like this all across the country. It would put a significant down payment on high-speed rail and provide states and cities with the funding certainty to plan and build big projects. We're looking for a future where we aren't stuck in traffic, but rather where our citizens can get to work and our businesses can get their goods to market. And Congress is currently debating, and uh, Congressman Price is a leader in that effort, what to do. And I'd urge all of you uh, to reach out to them and let them know that we need funding for projects like Union Station and we need to invest in the future. So thank you for having us and congratulations on this great day. Thank you, Assistant Secretary Monet. Now I'd like to invite Senior Manager of State Corridors for Amtrak, Jay MacArthur, to say a few words. First, let me open with how humbled I am to be here today. 36 years ago, I went into this business of railroading in this very city. At that time, the train station was where Logan's Trading Company is. I was fortunate enough during that time, during because of operational changes, 1987, to move to our current location. And um, I'm struck when I look at this crowd with the backdrop of this great city, bookend by where this operation, this passenger rail operates today in its future. I, it is, it's just amazing to me, and I am glad to be able to be a part of this. So thank you. Uh, good morning, and as the mayor mentioned, I am Jay MacArthur, Senior Manager of State Quarters for Amtrak, also known as America's Railroad. Thank you for joining us today's groundbreaking ceremony for the new Raleigh Union Station. The new facility will replace the existing Amtrak station <coughs> on Cabarrus Street and we are happy to work with the City of Raleigh and NCDOT to make this new station a reality. Intercity passenger rail is critical to communities like Raleigh and the economic strength of North Carolina as well as our nation as a whole. Amtrak's an integral component of the transportation system that provides mobility, connectivity needed to drive economic growth, maintain our social fabric, and allow families to remain physically connected. North Carolina invested wisely not only to expand passenger rail services, but also in stations like Raleigh's Union Station. Due to the efforts of the state of North Carolina, your options to travel by train have expanded, not only from Charlotte to Raleigh, but other areas of the state on board the Carolinian and Piedmont trains and to a whole range of destinations up and down the East Coast and across America. At the end of our last physical year, Amtrak employed 162 North Carolina residents who earned more than $12.4 million. In addition, Amtrak spent more than $77.4 million on goods and services in North Carolina during that same period. Trains connect families, friends, and businesses from big cities to small towns in many urban areas. Amtrak and commuter trains share facilities with bus and light rail, making seamless interconnected journeys. Trains matter to America. Thank you for coming out today to show your support, and we look forward to welcoming you on board very soon. Thank you, Mr. MacArthur. Once again, I'd like to thank all of our partners for being here today to mark this occasion. In addition to our speakers, I want to be sure to thank my fellow city council members, our city manager and city staff for all their hard work moving this project forward. 
I'd also like to thank Steve Schuster of the Clearscapes design team. <laughs> Scott Cutler of the Clancy and Thay Scansa Joint Venture in association with Holt Brothers. David King of the Triangle Transit Authority. <laughs> Craig Newton, the NCDOT Project Manager. Ro Roberta Fox, the City of Raleigh Project Manager. Thanks, Roberta. And, Br and Brandon Poole in the City Attorney's Office. This project has been a true partnership between all levels of government and the local community. So thank you all so much for coming today, and now I'd like to invite today's speakers in joining me in the groundbreaking.